So have you ever taken something for granted? It's a little bit of a rhetorical question, I know. But there is a good chance that you have. We can't help it, really. It, it, we have to take some things for granted just to get through the day. We take it for granted that the sun will keep on shining every day, even on a rainy day. And we take it for granted that our car will keep running today. That is, until it doesn't. <laughs> there are a lot of things that we take for granted. We assume that they will always be there or work according to the plan that we, well, expect all the time. We do this because some things are just that reliable. We don't have to consider them at all most of the time. Sometimes we not only take things for granted, but we also go so far as to discount or even discard things that are so common and small that we can regard them as insignificant. Toss it away, and you won't even know anything was missing. But today, in Jesus' words, we are called to pay attention to those small and insignificant things. In today's scriptures, Jesus presents us with three things that start out small, but grow so much bigger than anyone would imagine. Now, mustard seeds are not all that common in our society, unless you have a recipe calling for fresh mustard seeds, or you are a mustard farmer, um, or you are a pastor who did way too much research on mustard for a sermon, you, you probably don't interact with a lot of raw mustard. Like you, I mostly encounter mustard in a yellow bottle, but if but it all starts with a seed that is indeed the tiniest of seeds, almost like grains of sand. And while there are different varieties of mustard plants, the one that we are concerned with today is the variety that grows into a massive shrub or even a tree. And, that's, and what's important to know about these plants is how they start out small and end up big. So big that they can be, well, they can quickly become challenging to control. Imagine the biggest nuisance weed or shrub in a field or garden. It just takes up all the space that, you, that it can get. You cut away a part of it and it only grows back bigger and fuller later on. And if you try to shake that tree or bush or shrub, it will have hundreds of little birds flying everywhere. This massive plant is an ecosystem in and of itself. Small animals and birds shelter in it, and they gain nourishment from it. It's an essential plant to the wildlife, and it can be useful to people if you cultivate it. Or it could become a bit of overwhelming for the gardener to deal with. These massive plants that you cannot help but notice when they are in the landscape, all start as a tiny seed, so tiny that you could easily overlook and regard them as worthless. And it's this little seed with massive potential that Jesus compares the kingdom of God and our faith with. Now, none of us here in this room would ever admit to taking the kingdom of God or our faith for granted. We would never even admit to treating it as worthless and without respect. But in so many ways, the world does. And I'm afraid that, yes, times I think so do we. Faith in this context is connected to the confidence that says, yes, we have a relationship with God, and that does matter. And it does move mountains, and it can move mulberry trees. Another imposing plant, if you haven't seen one. Faith in God is not just a matter of believing in God's reality, but it is a matter of believing that God can be encountered. And because we have experienced the living God, we also grow stronger from that encounter. When we begin our faith journey, it can seem tiny. It seems impossible that we could ever do great things like the heroes of the faith. 
When we stand beside those mighty trees of faithfulness that stood for justice or truth in the name of God, we can say to ourselves, I can never do what they did. We let ourselves stay small, even to the point that we don't, we doubt we could even invite a new friend to church or lend a helping hand to a stranger that we have never met before. We convince ourselves that because we are small and feel small inside, we will always be small. But faith in Christ is not a lifeless speck of sand. Faith is a growing seed that wants to be nourished on God's word and be watered by the witness of God's people. Faith wants to grow and grow till it has embiggened the life that is bold enough to believe in a God who moves mountains and is tender enough to plant a tree. And for those English people, yes, embiggen is a word now. <laughs> Your tiny little faith gives you the leverage to do amazing things in the power of the Holy Spirit. When faith is applied correctly, with God's guidance, mountains can be moved, lives can be changed, and the kingdom of God can begin to seem like a real oncoming force to be reckoned with. Imagine what one ordinary person can do with just a little bit of faith. Now imagine what a bunch of normal persons can do together with their tiny bit of faith. Now we are starting to talk about a kingdom or a kingdom, as some theologians like to say. Moving mountains and mulberry trees are a lot easier when we bring our faithfulness together. But now, now Jesus is talking about a mustard tree that shelters a flock of birds. Now we are talking about a community of faith. When people gather together in faith, we are not only talking about a confident faith, but we are talking about a shared faith that trusts each other and is able to find the source of our faith in God. We are talking about a kind of church that keeps faith with each other and also with the gardening God. The God who planted the seeds that have grown to shelter and support them. It's so easy for us to take this faith and this community of faith for granted. It's so easy to let the pressures of this world discount the smallness of, of this faith, especially when we can't see its potential to grow and transform the lives of all who live in and around it. When it seems small and unnecessary, we can let it go before it has a chance to germinate. When we feel small, we can count ourselves out before we even tried to leverage our faith and accomplish anything at all. We can surrender the boldness to grow in God if we let ourselves undersell these seeds of faith. A little like Jack and the Beanstalk. We, we think we have been tricked into buying some worthless beans, maybe, only to discover a power in those pods that can reach the clouds and beyond. A power that can help us topple giants if we have faith that through Christ, all things are possible. Don't throw away the seed of faith that the great gardener has given you. Don't cast it away with the empty mustard bottles and the other rubbish. Make a space in the garden of your life and plant it. Let God water it with grace. Watch over it to see when it starts to sprout. And when you see those little sprouts, be like a little kid. It's like, look! It's growing. It's exciting. Keep feeding it the word and worship that it desires so much to grow with. Prune it when necessary, yes, but don't cut it down until it has a chance to produce its first seeds. When the birds come to roost, you will see that they came to take shelter in the same faith that you have been nurturing. And when the seeds are ready to be released, those birds will help spread them all over the land until a garden has grown into a kingdom, a kingdom of faith in God's saving power. And all that started with a tiny seed that God planted in you, beloved. One of the things that excited me in recent months was with the confirmation class, to watch these young people discover 
that there were seeds of faith in their lives. To watch them discover that there was something there that needed to be nurtured and grow. I hope and pray that they will keep nurturing that seed of faith and others in their lives will nurture it as well. Because I think they can do great things in faithfulness to God. It's a wonderful thing to see somebody discover that seed and watch it grow. Let us pray. Well, before we pray, I want to remind you what Jesus said. Jesus said all of this so that you may believe. Believe that God can do and will do big things with you. But you, must think t- that, but you must not think that these tiny, faithful seeds cannot pack a powerful punch. Maybe not today, but eventually, you wait and see. You see what will move, and I tell you it will be moving in God's name. Ask the Lord to increase your faith if you still have your concerns. Jesus will tell you, this parable and many other parables. And then watch out. You may find yourselves with your feet off the ground as you rest on a branch of a tree that God planted just for you. Now let us pray. Holy gardening God, you plant the seed of faith that feeds and shelters your children. You make an environment for the birds to sing your praise and warm the hearts of your family. When we feel small and insignificant, water us with grace and help us grow big and strong like Jesus. And when the mountains and the mulberry trees challenge our faith, may we, with the boldness of the Spirit, say, Move! Because this is God's garden, and we have seeds of faithfulness to harvest. May we all keep the faith growing in Jesus' name. Amen.